I, on the wood picker today, I'm replacing this bottom modern screw with this wooden cross. But I must admit, I'm not 100% satisfied. The day I finished my new workbench, I fell in love with my leg vice crisscross. The chop always stays straight by itself. <laughs> On my old workbench, I had to move a wooden screw at the bottom. After several turns, I had to switch screws to keep it straight, so it can open or close. But on my new workbench, it's not necessary. The trap stays always straight because of its crisscross. So I'll make one out of wood for my old workbench. But I begin with a small problem. When I built my workbench, I was able to drill those holes straight on the drill press. But with a completed workbench, it's impossible to drill straight holes by hand. So I'll make a metal support to hold one side of the crisscross. I begin by cutting a piece of square tubing about 4 inches long. Next, I remove one side. And make sure it's not too sharp. Then, to make it shine, I sand it real nice. Now, I need to drill the mounting holes. And the pivot hole. Now I can cut some wood. I rip two one-inch square pieces of maple. It's at that moment that I noticed that I've just saved myself from a nasty fire. When I cut the square tubing, an hour and ten minutes ago, some sparks fell inside my bandsaw, which is 12 feet away. I dodge a bullet this time. And I thought a fire starting from a spark was just an urban legend. While editing this video, I realized that my fire extinguisher was lying in its box in the corner of the shop. I think I should install it. But after getting rid of this, I can go back to my crisscross. I continue by drilling a hole in the middle of each piece of wood. Next, I cut a rod for the pivot. And chamfer its edges. After pounding the rod into both pieces, I can see that it's working fine. Now, with the rod holding both pieces together, I can cut to length both pieces at the same time. and sand their ends round. But when I check if the pivot hole is in the center, I can see that it's not. One side is longer than the other. So I return to the center. Okay, now the rod is perfectly centered. Now I can mark the placement of the top pivot holes and drill them at the same time. Now I can remove the old chop from my old workbench. 
One thing for sure, I won't miss this obnoxious noise. When it's removed, I can mark the placement of the future crisscross and with a router and a straight bit, I remove some wood. First pass is done. I still need to make several more. Since I reference a router fence on this side of the leg, I can cut up to my line. So I clamp a square piece of wood onto the workbench, use its straight edge to guide the router and cut what I didn't cut before. After each cut, I move the piece a bit and repeat the cut. In the end, I just have a small sliver of wood to remove. So using a setup block, I figure what I need to remove and move the panel that distance. Then I can finish the recess. Okay, I cut a little bit too much there, but this will still work fine. Now I need to cut the same recess, but on the chop itself. I make one pass on each side of the chop. I end up having just the center to remove. The ends are finished by end. Now I need to mark where the top pivot hole will be on the chop. I begin by marking the placement of the pivot. Then I transfer it to the chop. Then with the drill press, I drill the chop pivot hole. To finish the hole, I need a longer drill bit. Now I can cut another rod for the top pivot. After assembling the top support, I can mark and drill some pilot holes. Just before screwing the support in place. Now I can put the chop in place. And finally, assemble it all. This is the first try. Hmm, it's not what I've been hoping for. I'll add some shim on the bottom of the crisscross and try it again. Ah, it's bitter, but the chop is awfully crooked. And everybody can see that the wood has too much spring in it. Well, I have no choice, I reassemble it. Well, this works, but I need to do something to stop this flexing. If I look at my new leg vise, the cast iron flexes a little bit, but nothing like that. Besides this, everything works. I'll need to do something one day to make it better, but this will have to be in another episode of The Woodpecker. I, on the woodpecker today, I replace my wooden cross with one made out of metal. In my last episode, I made a wooden crisscross for my old workbench but I found the wooden crisscross was not strong enough. It flexes too much. So I remove it and brought it to my local metal worker and asked him to build a metal replica of my wooden parts. And here it is, my new metal crisscross. But before I put it in place, I need to paint it. I begin with a coat of primer. Next, two coats of black paint. When the paint is dry, I remove the chop and try to install my new crisscross. 
this doesn't work. Looking at it more closely, I can see that it's not a perfect replica. Ah. So I go outside and remove some metal. When it's perfect, I spray some paint on it. The other piece has the same defect, but instead of grinding the metal, I remove some wood. This is much simpler. Now it's perfect. I can put everything back together now. I begin by screwing the metal bracket in place. Next, the chop. Finally, the pivot rod. To hold the rod in place, I ask the metal worker to tap a hole so I can screw a screw to hold one side of the rod. Done. This is my new and improved leg vise. And now if I put a piece into the vise, it flexes way less. This is way better. I'm really satisfied now. And from now on, I won't need to use a wooden screw to keep my chop straight. I hope my new crisscross inspired you to make your own. As for us, we'll see each other real soon on the next episode of The Woodpecker. Woodpecker.